Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable, a Wood Elf production. This week, Mark offers franchises pot and time limits. Wade stamps Shakira with his approval while searching funny beavers. Florida man attempts to mow into the horizon. And Bob stretches his backyard while googling supermassive black holes. Yes, it's time for The Boys Bet It All. Now sit back and prepare to be distracted and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to Distractable, the podcast. Okay. What? Just the way you said hello, I've never heard you talk like that. Hello. Hello. Why are you questioning him? He always speaks this way. I always. Hello. Hello. And welcome. Uh, anyway, sorry, go ahead. I always intro a podcast like a witch opening a door to trick or treaters. <laughs> <laughs> hello. <laughs> My, my, <laughs> what <laughs> lovely contestants you are. <laughs> I just want some candy, Mrs. Witch. No, witch am I? You want candy? How about some ladies' fingers? <gasps> anyway. I'm sad I wouldn't to have any more of those. <laughs> <laughs> this is Distractable, the podcast where we uh, have a very consistent format that is repeated every week and nothing is ever deviating from that. Yeah. Um, and the judging is completely fair and done by me. Uh-huh. It's a formula that's proven to work. Yes, it can work for you as well. If you want to franchise our podcast, you can buy our franchise <laughs> kit and at a nominal 60% licensing fee, you too can make a distractible affiliated podcast. Really? How much do we get from that? Potential franchises are limited to acceptable plots of land only. Plot must be approved by the distractible board before your franchise may open. We have a board? Mm. I really need to pay attention more. <laughs> you... We were talking last episode about how bad of a listener you are. You miss a lot. Yeah, you miss a lot. God. A lot, man. Mm -hmm. I thought the meetings were optional. Well. Well. Yeah, I mean, technically, I guess. Yeah. Kind of important stuff. Am I getting paid for this? Mm -hmm. Technically? Yeah, technically. Good enough for me. <laughs> Good, good. No more questions. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. So, how are you guys doing? Would you like to partake in any small talk? Can I just say, this is a little dated at this point by probably years, but man, Tom Holland's performance for doing Rihanna's Umbrella, mwah, top tier. And Shakira, mwah, always top tier. Just right. generally Shakira, good stuff. Yes. <laughs> just Shakira, top tier. One of my two ever, like, celebrity crushes growing up in life. Whatever you're doing, keep it up, Shakira. Yeah. Whenever, wherever. Wade approved. Killing it, Shakira. The stamp that really matters. Mine. Mm -hmm. Uh, small talk, small talk, small talk. Um, uh, no. All right. Good job, everybody. I'm going to award both of you 200 points. Oh, yes. That's oh, wow. a lot right. of points. Yeah. Yes, it is. Assuming it's the usual standard point scale, nothing crazy is happening right yes, now. Yes, nothing crazy is happening at all. <laughs> I feel very reassured. Aggressively reassured. Between this voice and the witch opening, I feel not assured at all. Maybe we get points for doing voices. Voices? Oh, you think you get points? Yeah, you gave us. You just gave us to each of us two hundred points. You said that out loud. Uh, you think you will further get points? <laughs> yeah, this is sort of the bit. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Will, I hope there's scary music going on in the background. If it's like a circus, I'm going to be very upset. And lightning crashes of thunder. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so today we're going to play a fun little game. Okay. It's open-ended, but not quite as open-ended as anything goes. In the same vein, I want you guys to bring me entertaining things on the internet that you have found. I will take literally anything, and it is a competition I will declare a winner on who is the funniest. However, the catch. Uh -huh. You each have 200 points, correct? Yes. Yeah, I believe so. The catch is for every second that you take to search for a thing, I will deduct one point and put it into the pot. 
Okay. The winner of that round will get the entirety of the pot, which is the entirety of the time it took both of you to go find that thing. Okay. Understood. So you have an advantage for getting speed. If you have things in mind, you don't have to sacrifice that many points. If you take your time, you might find something better, and that could help you in the long run. But if you take too long and don't find something, the point meter caps out at one minute. If you don't find anything in that minute, all 60 points will be put in the pot, and you will be at a grand disadvantage for that round. I like it. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Everybody happy with that? Wade's not saying a lot of affirmative thing. I just want to make sure he's here with us. I kind of half zoned out. I'm not going to lie, but I think I've got the gist. I think he might be going to Google ahead of time. Don't you dare. Huh? Share me your screen. Uh, no. Wade, share me your screen. Do I have to? <laughs> yes, this is the honor system. You guys cannot look up anything outside of the time. This is the honor system. Let me check your shit. There you go. I'm watching Shakira perform at the Super Bowl. <laughs> You're watching Shakira? <laughs> Were you even listening to anything I said? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I was wherever, whenever in it, man. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. I had all this prepared. I spent so long thinking how this would work. I am ready to compete and Google things. <laughs> what do you what are we doing? Give me a reiteration of what we're doing. Okay, we have to find things that you find funny quickly or we lose points. And something about all the points, Bob. Uh, that was kind of close, but not exactly. I'm going to start you off at a handicap, Wade. I'm deducting 20 <laughs> points. Is that good or bad? That's bad. Wait, do those go into the pot or what? Because those are just out of the game now. That kind of hurts both of us, potentially. Out of the game. So if Bob did nothing for the rest of this episode, he would win. That's giving him the handicap, not me. Isn't that supposed to be a good thing? If you get a handicap, you're like saying, oh, okay, you start with an advantage. You're starting with a disadvantage. No, I said I am handicapping you. That's like golf, oh. where where you st you get a, an advantage or something. This is not golf. Okay, well, I don't know what all that means, but I sound like I'm being screwed. That's fair. You're being punished. <laughs> Go watch your Shakir. <laughs> all right, I'm still streaming if you guys want to watch with me. <laughs> oh, well, I'll turn that on, I guess. Is there sound? Yeah, is there sound? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, okay. I'm not hearing anything. You have to you have to unmute it, but there you can listen to it. That's just really getting it. Huh. Yeah, we're recording. I should probably pause. All right, we can, whatever, it's fine. Oh, okay, yeah. Are you here now? Uh, we'll catch that later. We'll catch okay. that. Are you worried about the episode now? Or you... Well, for Will's sake. Good uh, gracious. I'm just sitting here drooling over myself, so I'll stop. All right, fair enough. Okay, wow. Wade has quickly turned into the creepy old guy drooling at Shakira. How could he? Oh, what do you mean? I've always been creepily drooling. <laughs> <laughs> you right, you right. Okay, I'm gonna be back up to 200 points because that was that was fun. So Thank you. Uh, this is a thing. So just remember, it is in the allotted time. Do not look up anything outside of that time. Okay. Uh, you can find something as soon as possible, but you have to keep Google open on its home page. Okay. That's the rule. So open up a browser, okay. put Google, Google. just Google.com, and whatever the front is. Uh, Wade, just out of curiosity to ensure compliance. What is the Google art for today? Because I'm looking at it and I know what it is, but do you recognize this? Uh, it's, uh, well, it was a G with a, a honeycomb, but now it's showing space pictures from the telescope. Okay. <laughs> That's the James Webb Space Telescope. Yeah. Is the honeycomb of golden mirrors. And then there's some panties that look like a ship that the honeycomb's taking pictures on. Yeah. Okay. That might be Shakira. Yeah. That, that, I don't think that's quite right. Oh, look at it for a while. Once the honeycomb's on like a pair of, it looks like a pair of panties with a camera. I don't know, it man. It's like a spacecraft. Mm -hmm. I guess you could say it's panties. That is not. That is panties. I... And so to confirm also just a little bit more, when you find your whatever it is, you have to paste it into Discord at the moment that you find it. And that is my right. entry for to stop the timer for you guys. 
Okay. All right. Well, so is it is it collectively the timer, or is there a timer for each of us? So if I find something in two seconds, but Wade takes the whole minute, how does the points work? Yeah, I've got it lapped. So I've got a time stopwatch here. I hit start when the first person says paste it in. I hit lap, and then the other person, I'll stop it. Okay. You guys at home, Google this stuff yourself. I guess you could watch and laugh. Or no, something. I don't you, know. It's you're googling things that are funny stories to talk about for podcasting don't google funny videos wade oh were you thinking to do that wade of course i was following the rules but it's not even a rule (laughs) (laughs) you're on a podcast oh okay oh my god so so look so i'm not gonna help you (laughs) just google whatever you want buddy This episode of Distractable is sponsored by Noom. Have you ever eaten food? Once or twice. You know what? Honestly, though, food and I are kind of beefing right now. Food is like, come and eat me, come and eat me. And I'm like, no. And why do you sound like that guy who plays Rocky Balboa in the movies? I don't want to do that. (laughs) And food is like, I'm pizza. You could have pizza. And I'm like, oh. And then I eat like a whole pizza. I don't know. Food seems like a dick. Food's not a dick. Food's BFF. You just have to learn to have a different relationship with food. I don't know, man. It's tough. Good food is like the friend that tries to give you good advice that you ignore. And then unhealthy food is like those people you do hang out with that you know you shouldn't that are going to get you in trouble, but yet you feel tempted to anyway. Well, why don't you try Noom Weight? Noom Weight is like a coach so that you can build more sustainable habits and behaviors with your food. It's not that one food is bad or one food doesn't talk to you or one food ignores you it's not about that what if food gets jealous of the other food i'm bringing around you know well it's okay because you'll be able to divvy up your time to all of your favorite foods with noom weight by guiding you through what you need in the moment and getting you thinking about what's important for your body in that time without going so far as saying you can't eat this and can't eat that hey buddy why ain't you called me Hey, I got that spicy sausage this time. Come on, eat me. I don't know if this is Two Toes Johnny or the... Which character is this? Stay focused on what's important to you with Noom Weight's psychology-based approach. Sign up for your trial today at Noom.com slash distractible. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash D-I-S-T-R-A-T-T-I-B-L-E to sign up for your trial today. This episode of Distractible is sponsored by the Sonos Ray. Do you guys love hearing the sound of our own voices? I do. No, well. Well, if you don't, Bob, that's because you're listening on the wrong devices. You could be listening on a Sonos Ray instead of whatever speaker. No, no. See, that's the thing is it sounds fine. The Ray actually is as good as you're saying. It's fantastic. And the the dialogue is really crisp. But I think understanding every single word that we say is part of what's making it worse for me. Wow. (laughs) We're versatile. Mark has a compact design, much like the Ray. Yeah, what? And zero stress to set it up. It only takes two cables and a few minutes to get started. It took like a like a minute. Like it's super easy. And the moment Distractable started playing. Stress through the roof. So you're saying the Sonos Ray is fantastic. The only thing you don't like is our podcast. You couldn't even say that I don't like us. Which one of us is like? Do you think is wor- worst? Worst? Yeah, worst. Between the two of you, huh? Mark is the w- second worst. Then second worst. That makes me the worst. Yeah, you're in, you're the loser. Okay, enough. Everyone out there, you can experience us. Yeah. TV, yeah. music, other podcasts, which I don't know why you would need those, but you can. Yeah. And games like never before with the Sonos Ray. Yeah. This new compact and easy to use soundbar puts you at the center of all your entertainment with clear, crisp dialogue and perfectly balanced bass. Just plug in the power cable, connect it to your TV, and get set up on the Sonos app within minutes. Wow. Before you know it, you have blockbuster sound and streamlined control of content from all your favorite services like Distractable. Visit Sonos.com to shop Ray now. Take that, Bob! All right, are you guys ready for the first round? Yeah. Yes. All right. Now, get... what's, the, what's the topic? Never mind. Okay, I'm good. here we go. <laughs> I'm ready. Three, two, one, go! Uh huh. Uh huh. Can they be images or they have to be stories? <laughs> Whatever you want, buddy. Whatever you want.
I found this funny picture. Does that count? And that's a lap for Wade. <laughs> it's literally. You get. <laughs> get <laughs> God. Okay, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so Wade came in at 37 seconds with his, so I'm deducting 37 points and putting it in the pot. Da da da. Bob, you got in at 49 seconds. I'm deducting 49, putting in the pot. The pot has a total of 86 points in it. Wade, what is your interesting thing you've brought to the table? <laughs> this guy got hit in the face with a ball, and the picture was taken right as it collides, and his face is so stupid. <sighs> I mean, <laughs> I, it's, yeah, <laughs> that's happening. See, you guys are laughing. I feel like I did a good job. I'm laughing, not at the picture, just at the fact that you brought it. It's like a kid at show and tell. <laughs> Abra is picture of a guy getting hit with a ball. All right, Bob, what do you got? What do you got? <laughs> okay. Well, I thought I'd start off with a guaranteed strong one. Mm -hmm. uh, Florida man. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's smart. Deputies of the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office were trying to serve an arrest warrant on a 40-year-old Florida man this weekend. Mm -hmm. When they uh, approached his property, he was in the backyard on a riding mower, uh, mowing his lawn, presumably. The officers shouted at him to stop, get off the mower, and get on the ground. And instead, Florida man decided he was going to get away on his trusty steed and punched it on the riding mower. <laughs> <laughs> the deputies chased him down on foot and tasered him, and he fell off of the mower. <laughs> did he get to finish mowing? He did not. Did he get pulled under the mower? No, he fell to the side. It, it was. Uh. It's, he, he didn't get very far. It turns out riding mowers are pretty slow. Although... Once they had him restrained, the deputies searched him. He had a revolver, a handcuff key, and a meth pipe with meth in it tucked in his waistband. <laughs> so he wasn't just mowing the lawn. He was multitasking. That's ready to go. Do you guys want to know what the fastest lawnmower in the world is? Are you going to talk about lawnmower racing? Because I love me some lawnmower racing. I, I have the Guinness record of the fastest lawnmower. Do you have extensive knowledge in lawnmower racing? I'm going to guess that it's 53 miles per hour. I know that lawnmower racing is not a straight line sport. So if this is some sort of custom lawnmower, it probably goes faster than the ones that I've seen. But lawnmower racing is like dirt track racing with custom lawnmowers, but... The engines are not modified, so it's like normal stock lawnmower engines. Uh -huh. It's really fun. They go easily 40 or 50 miles an hour, I think, but okay. I don't know. I don't know what the fastest is. I would love to see it with an actual like lawn. The fastest lawnmower record is 143 miles an hour. Holy crap. Was it mowing a lawn at this speed or was it just racing? Did you say 143? 143 miles an hour. I was close. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I feel like there has to be a qualification, though, that it was technically mowing a lawn when it hit that speed. Wow. Or, like, there's a patch of grass at the end of the drag strip, and they have to engage the motor right at the time when they go over it. <laughs> I want to see the world record for fastest mowed lawn. Like, the same lawn had yeah. to be mowed by different lawn mowers, and who could do it the fastest? I feel uh -huh. like if you're going to have that Guinness World Record, that has to be part of it. You can make anything fast. Yeah. The world's fastest go-kart is probably a go-kart chassis with a bunch of modified stuff and like a motorcycle engine on it. Which, yeah. Then it's not a go-kart, is it? No. It's not doing the thing it's designed to do, and it's completely unsafe and unwieldy. Mm -hmm. I want to see the fastest lawn mower actually mowing a lawn. I think that's a way more impressive feat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. No way they cut any grass at 140 whatever miles an hour. I know, right? <laughs> Zero chance. I mean... At that point, it is just a car. Like, you, you put an engine on four wheels and you have a cart or a car of some kind just because it technically has a blade. If that blade wasn't going when it was happening, it's not a lawnmower. Yeah. It's not mowing a lawn. And, like, I'm sure, like, it could mow a lawn or something. I'm sure it met some stipulation, like the blade was engageable. Mm. But that's not impressive. Yeah. It's not mowing lawns. It's just a fast car with a thing on, on the bottom of it that yeah. 
good yeah. mow a lawn. It's not a lawnmower. Or what if it's the fastest lawnmower as in the person and he's mowing a lawn with a weed Ooh. whacker out the side, but he's in a in the jet from Top Gun, the newest one. And he's doing <laughs> Mach 9. <laughs> well, I was going to say, if it's the fastest human lawnmower, it's got to be with a scythe then, right? It's got to be human powered. Ooh. Oh my god. A guy on foot with those scythes that they used to cut grass yeah. in huge swaths. <laughs> Very cool looking. Very impressive. Very impressive. Do the ones count that aren't like gas powered? Like there's like the push mower that's just like the blades and that spin when you push the wheel. Does that count? I would say that's a little bit of mechanical advantage, but I like that's still powered by the human. Yeah. yeah. Anything that is mowing the lawn. Yeah. You are cutting grass. Therefore, you are mowing the lawn. I would be okay with that. At the speed at which you travel and are able to do that task. I think a scythe would honestly be faster than one of those uh, rotary push blade ones because yeah. you could just cover so much more ground width wise but yeah, it would probably be more aerodynamic too yeah i get real tired of spinning in circles after a while though you don't have to spin like it oh rotational speed now you're thinking wade that's pretty good yeah, thank you oh thank well you. that just sounds dangerous <laughs> <laughs> oh none of this else sounded dangerous <laughs> the fastest lawnmower blade rotation this isn't about safety it's about speed right right he's got a point uh, that's true that's true yeah However, uh, this first round, I'm going to give this to Bob. His what? topic led to way more discussion. Florida man. Uh, Florida man. We've balls to the face for years. We didn't talk about it for 10 seconds. That's because you guys laughed and moved on the way comedy is meant to be, not dissected. I tried, man. I yeah. sat there and tried to die, and I said, yep. That's a picture of what you said. That's all I could think of. <laughs> I enjoyed our discussion, but I laughed more at my image. Uh -huh. All right. Well, that's not a fair point. Therefore, you don't get any points. Okay. Bob wins the pot, which was 86 oh, yes. points. Wade with a whopping negative 49 net from that one. The score is now Bob with 249 delicious seconds with which to peruse his next topic. And Wade, you have 151 points left. What happens if one of us runs out of points? Do you only get however many points you have to search for something and then you're done? It is game over. I'm going to have to give Wade some gimmies. Oh, God. I got to go to the negatives again? No. Th what did I just say, Wade? I don't know. What I was did Googling. I just say? You're go. Stop Googling. I needed to cheat. Share your screen. Oh, God damn it. I don't pull up a tab of security, Burra. Look, Burra. Honestly, don't be too hard on Wade because this episode's going to end like 20 <laughs> minutes if we don't give him a break here, I think. <laughs> No, 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 no. All right, I'm back at Google.com. Mm. Oh, I thought we were right, just Google.net. Yes, I'm ready. Wait, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, go in. Three, two, one, go! We'll be sure to put in a lot of typing and some dramatic, intense music, like a spy movie. Uh-huh. Ooh, this isn't what I thought was going to happen. I'm done. Done? I don't see I'm anything. I'm copying and pasting. I just, it took it me went. longer. Than oh, I had the shit. thing. Uh, I'm done too. I can't afford to lose any more points. Bam. Okay. All right. That was pretty good. Came in pretty close there. Bob, you were in 37 seconds. Okay. And Wade, you were in at 41 seconds. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> I can see what your link is. <laughs> Don't you cheat. All right, all right okay. Bob. You it's were okay. in first, therefore you go first. Okay, so I just want to preface this one by saying that I'm playing each round of this uh, with like a theme okay. in mind. All right. My my gimmick for this round, my theme was uh -huh. I free associated some words. Mm-hmm which uh, ended up having me type into Google, happy mouse inside fun time. <laughs> and okay. I, once I had finished free associating, I scrolled for the first thing that wasn't a video or an image or like a link to buy something on Amazon. Okay. So <laughs> the link that I have <laughs> is to BellaOnline.com, the voice of women. 
What? And this is an article by Connie Missler Davidson uh-huh. called Harry the Happy Mouse Activity Book Review. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> As we all know, Harry the Happy Mouse stars in the uh, series of picture books by author N.G.K. Uh, he's beautifully drawn by Janelle Dimmitt, who also does the illustrations for this activity book. The whimsical pictures perfectly illustrate <laughs> author N.G.K.'s text about Harry and his friends. Uh, anyway, suffice to say, Connie is pretty hype about this activity book. It's designed for ages five and up, so younger children might not get as much out of it, but the print is pretty large. <laughs> Each page is a color colorable page, so there's a lot of what coloring is happening activities. Right now? <laughs> and and although there are puzzles and things to get the the kid uh, thinking, none of the pages uh-huh. are presented as just a boring puzzle <laughs> on a boring background. So this is really an interesting and engaging activity book. Uh-huh. The big thing that Connie wants everyone to remember is mm. when you're picking out activity books or gifts or puzzles or things for children, it's too easy to think, ooh, I would have fun doing this. You have to remember, are you buying this for you or are you buying this for this child? Wow. And are you going to enjoy this or is your child going to enjoy this? So if your I... child is a fan of Harry the Happy Mouse, this might be a great book. If they like oh, coloring, man. if you look at the puzzles and they seem like they'd be something you could, you know, you just have to think about who is this for and don't buy activity books for yourself. You're an adult. Wow. I got to tell you, when Harry the Happy Mouse activity book sales spike in a couple weeks from recording this, <laughs> they're not going to know what the hell hit them. <laughs> Are we the Elon Musk of children's books? <laughs> <laughs> Harry the Happy Mouse is going to the moon, kiddos. <laughs> he might have made Dogecoin spike, but we're making Harry the Happy Mouse spike. Oh, wow. Well, I got to Google Harry the Happy Mouse. Oh, it looks delightful. It does, doesn't it? The illustrations what? honestly are great. Oh, it actually does. Why did you need to look it up? Connie gave it a glowing review. Wasn't that enough for you? Well, I saw the picture on the website, but it didn't seem to be indicative of what it actually was. Literally I like... grass and mushrooms grow out of this book. Yeah, but if you look up the actual book, it's not quite like that. But I do like the art of this book. It does feel a lot like the kind of books I read as a kid, the kind of same illustration and color. It feels like very hand-drawn. I do enjoy that. And as mysterious as the author NGK sounds, I'm sure... Oh, no, there are other books. Interesting. This is different people. Okay, it's not the same. I just saw Combating Corruption, Encouraging Ethics, The Civil Engineering Handbook, and Climate Change, The Facts, uh, Opening and Managing a Law Office, and then Harry the Happy Mouse. It's different authors. I'm like, what okay. is going okay. on here? <laughs> Also, Adamant Spirits, an anthology of romantic urban fantasy, science fiction, and paranormal (laughs) romance for Ukraine. Look, in no way is this an endorsement of NGK uh, or Harry the Happy Mouse. I'm really more interested in Bella Online and how it's the voice of women. Yeah, which is fascinating. I like the picture of Connie in the right side. I do think that lends a lot of credence to their reviews. She seems very relatable. Yes, exactly. Based on purely this picture, I would trust her insights into an activity book for a young child please don't crash this website i don't imagine they get a lot of traffic please the week following this episode's release this bella online's webmaster is going to be like oh oh are we in trouble what happened did someone do something uh, anyway that's my submission all right that was much more entertaining than it than i first thought it would be so well done <laughs> this is the worst subject ever because i'm so much funnier than anything i can search all right wade you haven't even gone yet why are you underselling yourself i'm willing to laugh at anything mm-hmm. so give it to me give me I'm some ready. good stuff i'm ready well so i'm stealing comedy from the funny beaver.com i've literally googled please help me find short funny stories <laughs> and here we are <laughs> <laughs> Boy, do I have a plethora for you. Oh, Mastery man. of search term optimization is uh, just 
enthralling and impressive and all kinds of words. This is truly incredible. I'm so ready. I'm ready to be enthralled. Thank you. All right, I'm going to give you guys a choice. Mm. Sex or divorce? You should choose, Mark. I'm, you're the judge here. Okay, I choose uh, divorce. All right. <clears throat> an elderly man in Phoenix calls his son in New York and says, I hate to ruin your day, but I have to tell you that your mother and I are divorcing. Mm. 45 years of this misery is enough. The son screams. We can't stand the sight of each other any longer, the old man says. We're sick of each other and I'm sick of talking about this, so you call your sister in Chicago and tell her yourself. And hangs up. Frantically, the son calls his sister who explodes on the phone. They're not getting divorced if I have anything to do about it. She shouts. I'll take care of this. She calls Phoenix immediately and screams at the old man. You are not getting divorced. Don't do a single thing until I get there. I'm calling my brother back and we'll both be there tomorrow. Until then, don't do a thing. Do you hear me? And hangs up. The old man hangs up the phone and turns to his wife and says, Okay, they're coming for Thanksgiving. What are we doing about Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> it was a ruse. A ruse, I tell you. <laughs> or at least the people at the funnybeaver.com tell you. Well, you know what? If a beaver told me that story, it would be really funny. I don't have an artist's or author's name for who wrote this, but the funny beaver has it, so it must be theirs. I mean, the beaver wrote it, obviously. Comedy yeah. beaver came through for you. Absolutely. I've never heard of the funnybeaver.com, but everyone, please crash well, Please this, don't crash, crash this the site. Website. They don't have an image of Connie. <laughs> <laughs> but she does look trustworthy, and don't crash this site either. This site is very telling because every, there's a lot of ads on here, right? But every oh, there's one or two. Every single ad is something that I have recently searched for, and this really <laughs> makes me concerned <laughs> at how accurately. Why do I have a vibrator and a vacuum cleaner? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> a, a vibrator and a vacuum cleaner? That is an interesting combination. Oh, we know how those go together. Not together, but there's an ad of each on top of the other. Interesting. <laughs> mine, is, mine is an electric bike converter kit, a 3D printer, actually two different 3D printers, a wallet, and a portable power supply. That's what I've I have at the moment. I've got back to school stuff, too. I've got small rig <laughs> camera camera cages and a trip to the Grand Canyon. Dope. <laughs> what does the world think of me? <laughs> what kind of, I wait, no, talk more about, I want to yeah, hear yeah, more about yeah. this vibrator. What is this about? I don't know, it's switched off. I scrolled down, I scrolled back up, and now it's granulated sugar. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 The no, algorithm no, is no. like, ah, what does this guy want? I he's all where the vibrator <laughs> went. He's all over the place. What do we give him? Uh, sugar. Everybody likes sugar. Oh, but the vibrator was black and purple, if that helps. <laughs> do they even buy ads for sugar? I don't know. Maybe I did do this in incognito, so maybe it's because it's incognito. Yeah, why are you in incognito? Go yeah, back to- Yeah, that's not fair. Yeah, that's not fair. I was- What do you mean it's not fair? That's- I what? want your personal search history to influence this. It's not fair. Yeah, absolutely. What? That was never announced in the rules when I was listening. Now I'm getting Lilienthal Berlin chronograph blue orange watch advertisements. Eh? I just got his Cox tailored business insurance for online oh, yeah, retailers. Yeah, I got his Cox too. You got his Cox? Are you ready to live your business dream? I am. I'm going to get a quote. Whenever, whenever, we'll always be <laughs> what, are you listening to Shakira? I'm Shakira, listening to yeah. <laughs> I'm here. All right, yeah, oh, sure, man. okay. Oh, there's a tab called Make Your Meme. Make Your Meme? They have a meme template thingy that's really janky looking. Wow, that is old school. <laughs> Mine came up with the, um, the American Chopper meme, where it's the dad yelling at the son and then he throws the chair. Uh-huh. Nice, nice. Classic. Mine, mine's Kermit looking at hooded Kermit. You know the do it one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and a few electric bikes, but please, dear God, Super Seventy Three sponsored this podcast. Give us all free electric bikes, dude. I would do the podcast on my Super Seventy Three or money. I take money too. I would ride my Super Seventy Three all the way to L.A. and then do a podcast with Mark. Hell, I'll yeah. ride it to the bank. Why? That's, who goes to the bank? Because money's coming too, oh. probably right. <laughs> <laughs> I would like that part. All right. I have to say this is weirdly closer than I thought it would be. Aha! Uh -huh. Wade, your website that you brought, the funny story, it was okay. The ads 
pretty cool. However, I gotta say, Bella Online and the Harry the Happy Mouse was both hilarious to me and then delightful. Like, if I'm just gonna go on a laughs per second kind of uh, experience and then joyfulness in my heart, Wade, you had a lot of laughs towards the end there. Bob, I was laughing in the beginning and I gotta admit, not entirely thinking you were gonna win, but then you turned it around somehow. I'm gonna eke this one out in Bob's favor. I cannot believe that that ended up working. That was a terrible plan. I don't know. I can't either. either. That was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. Wade, no, your website oh. Oh, don't be mad. As far as comedy goes. It, Wade, your website was really a garbage heap. It was pretty much the worst thing I've ever seen. At least it was comedy. <laughs> Mine was quite funny and entertaining. Oh my God, I had vibrators and plot twists. Uh, oh. If you could remember, if you could remember what the vibrator was and go to that website right now, I might, I might be inclined. Purple and black vibrator. <laughs> and this is on my regular search history. <laughs> share, share your screen. Share your screen. Oh, share your screen. Oh, share it. your screen. God. Okay. Share your screen. If it's Shakira, I'm not gonna be mad. It's not. I hid that tab. He's, he's rearranging. He's shifting things around. He's cheating. Uh -huh. I'm making sure I'm sharing the right screen. Got three watching, monitors. Watching. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. See if I can find it. Oh, uh, wow. Those all kind of look the same. We are looking at a lot of vibrators. Very purple. Very good. That one is a weird shape. Uh, these are mostly purple. There's Hank from Breaking Bad. How much purple? How much black? Oh, I think it was this one. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Because it kind of looked like a microphone at first, but it's definitely not. Oh. <laughs> this is the Doxy Diecast Purple Plug-In Vibrating Wand Massager. All right. Only $189.99. Jesus, it costs that much to get off. Good. God, no way. Hey, it's got clear plastic chassis construction with probably real metal chrome head there mm -hmm. at the top of it. And he said, dude, a bar is cheaper than 200 bucks. Wow. Oh, gross. That's no, those gross. are not okay. the same thing. All right. Listen. You were, I was on your side, Wade, and now I'm clearly off your side. All right, Bob. Oh, come on. The Dixie Doxy die cast? No, no, no. Bob wins. If you think sad dude at a bar offers the same type of satisfaction that mechanical, never stopping, ceaseless machine of pleasure has to offer, I think you don't understand the nature of bar Dudes. I really yeah, don't. Yeah. I would buy the vibrator before. Going. I would buy the vibrator before I'd buy sad dude at the bar. <laughs> you think these work on dicks? I mean, only one way to find out. It probably feels good. I don't know. Discreet shipping. Molly would never know. Order one. <laughs> I want to watch while you do <laughs> it. I win if I buy one from this sketchy site right now. I would right give now. you the round if you buy one. A hundred percent. I will give it to you. I don't know if I trust this website with my credit card. Dallas Novelty is an extremely trustworthy website. Yeah, look at the discount. It's discreet shipping. Sex is for everybody at Dallas novelty yeah sex is for everybody and everybody is in rainbow colors i would give you the round and even i'll throw in a few points uh, on top i approve of this message yeah oh wait there's coupon codes Ooh. oh yeah no yeah see if you can get like a group on for that or something yeah is there a group on for dallas novelty you have, hun <laughs> you have honey installed you have honey i don't go to honey.com slash ting slash fill or something Mm. I don't have any of that. I guess I'll take the L. I don't know if I want to buy this. <laughs> it's right there, Wade. I don't know oh, if the win is worth man. $200. You're choosing to lose, Wade. This podcast is now pay to win. <laughs> God, this is in my search history now. This is, your, this is your pay to win mechanic. I know you love those mobile games. Oh, my God. I'm reserving a future episode idea for a pay to win. Oh, mechanic. God. Jeez, no. Oh, God. yes, please. Oh, yuck. Why is there a picture of this guy in the middle of this <laughs> <laughs> i know hang from breaking that what the fuck yeah, he's looking at the wall of vibrators now anyway we got to move on we've only gotten two rounds in and we're, we're more than halfway over these purple ducks vibrate this episode of Distractable is brought to you by McDonald's. And here at Distractable, we love getting in friendly debates with one another. Right, guys? Very friendly. We're friends here. McDonald's crispy chicken sandwich comes in standard spicy or deluxe. Each one having that delicious chicken sandwich inside of it. But which one do you like? I'm trying to remember which one you like the best to get it right. We, the one that we all agreed on was the deluxe crispy chicken sandwich are you sure about that i thought it was the standard crispy chicken sandwich are you sure wait does mark like mayonnaise and lettuce and tomato i don't know i thought he just liked the toasted butter potato roll are you sure cut pickle and salted butter wait he's a masochist it's the spicy we love the spicy mark yeah we love the spicy that's right yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> that's a good answer. But that's leaving the standard and the deluxe very unloved. I'm starting to think you don't like them. Oh, well, I prefer the standard. I'm a deluxe man myself. Yeah, okay, all right. So we got one standard, one spicy, and one deluxe. Sounds like there's disagreement on which one's good and which one's <gasps> bad. No, we all agree that we, we love all of them. Except for I like the standard more, but yeah. All right, wait, I got one question for you. Huh? If you like them so much, what type of pickle is within the spicy crispy chicken sandwich? A crinkle cut. Bob, what's in the deluxe? The It's definitely got uh, mayonnaise and uh, t uh, t tomato and lettuce. And? So, and the chicken, and, and the chicken, and the chicken, and the chicken, and the chicken. There we go. Now, what if I told you? That you didn't have to pick. McDonald's crispy chicken sandwich. Not only can you choose from the three amazing options, but you can order ahead on the McDonald's app and try the sandwich that invented crispy juicy tender today at participating McDonald's. App download and registration required. You have the app downloads, right? Of course we do. Yeah, obviously. We love McDonald's. All right. The current standing is Bob with a whopping 290 points. <sighs> Wade, you have 110 points, which still means that you have full minutes. Well, I mean, not quite, but, you know, Great. almost two full minutes to look for your next story that's really going to give you the edge on this one. That's really going to lead you to success and winning this episode. Okay? I believe in you, Wade. Oh, thank you. All right. Are you both at your Google screens and ready? Yes. I am prepared. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Go! Uh, got something. Whoa. 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 Uh, yep. Whoa. Hang on. There. Link. All right. God damn. That was quick. Oh boy, I'm struggling here. Thirty my, seconds. My theme is not working. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll keep it going, Bob. Keep it going. Take your time. Oh boy, no, I'm in trouble. This theme, this theme has really let me down. Forty-five. Uh huh. Whenever, will I? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Done. Four, um, three, thing. two, yeah, whatever. Okay. One, and there go. oh, right at the end there. There you go. I think I win by default. No, he got it in just before. I got it in. He literally got it in right on the line. It was very impressive. Mm. All right. So that was a very nice 16 seconds for Wade to get his story in. So very few points wagered here. Uh, not much risk and a lot to earn because, uh, Bob, I hit the stopwatch at exactly a minute. Uh, I think you were just before it, though. So I'm going to make that 59 seconds. All right. All right. Or I can make it 60. No, 60 is fair. Okay, 60 I took the whole time. All right, he took the full time. Maybe it was worth it. Wade, you're up first. All right, so I found the history of bananas. My search, uh, let me go back and see what my search term was. Uh, I googled banana fruit horror stories. <laughs> <laughs> and I quickly clicked on the first link and decided to live and die by whatever I clicked on. And I'm pretty happy with the result. All right, cool. I'm enticed by the title. All right, so the article itself talks about, well, what you'd expect, the bloody dark history behind bananas, how cheap they are, companies engaging in horrible atrocities, trying to uh, gather and get bananas to sell uh, from the 1920s on, including the 1928 Banana Massacre. What? Which sounds hilarious, but looking at it, apparently isn't. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. The Banana Massacre? That's too funny of a name for something so serious looking. <laughs> <laughs> Let me read two paragraphs, I guess, to talk about this. Uh -huh. uh, companies engaged in brutal atrocities. In December 1928, a group of United Fruit Workers were on strike to protest subpar working conditions. After several weeks, United Fruit representatives and throat officials threatened to invade Colombia with the Marine Corps if the government didn't protect the business interest of United Fruit. Oh, God. Very yeah. serious stuff here as far as, like, you know, employees not being treated well. Before we say the atrocities like the 1928 thing of the past, we have to look at what's at stake now. Chiquita's not actually massacring people in 2007 admitted to paying $1.7 million to the United Self Defense Force Colombia. Basically, a bunch of bullshit companies trying to subvert rules and things and you know this is interesting to me i could go on and on and read this the facts of the article but i want to talk about the author ryan fan okay because ryan fan is described here as being a believer a baltimore city special ed teacher 
and a two minute, 39 second marathon runner. Those are his qualifications for this article. Okay. A believer. I don't know what he believes in, but he's a believer. Uh huh. He's also a diehard fan of The Wire. And you can support him. He's got a link where you can support him here at medium.com. What is this website? Am I understanding this? That you have an incredible article literally titled The Dark and Bloody History Behind Bananas with all of this incredible research and it writing about the fascinating actual Fascinating information. And you want to talk about... Believer. The author. The, the author matters. Credibility matters, you know? Of course, of course, definitely. I just, I'm intrigued by the fact that with all of this information here, Believer and Marathon Runner with a timestamp of 239 are two of the top three things about Ryan we need to know after reading about the Banana Massacre. I mean, I... <laughs> <laughs> That's just it's a fascinating thing to me. Bob, do you know do you know what point he's trying to make here? I Is he discrediting Ryan? It distracted for... me from the article when I saw Look, believer. Actually, discrediting the author is not unfair. So this website presents itself as like a journalism site, mm, right? Okay. So this is hosted on Medium. All right. It is not journalism. Ah. It, this platform, it's technically, I mean, I don't know, technically, it's called on like its Wikipedia article, an example of social journalism. Oh, okay. This is basically an open platform where people can publish whatever they want. And there are amateurs and professionals publishing on this website. But so this guy, his credentials are believer. What he believer, a special ed teacher. He he's not a journalist. Uh -huh. But this is published as if it's like a news article. This seems sketchy to me. Uh. To his credit, if you look at the article, the article seems legit, and all of the underlined bits are sources. Apparently, I've not clicked on them, but like they show links, and I can see that this one links to the New York Times articles. So there are sources to the claims and such. So I'm not saying that the information here is presented as false. Mm -hmm. It's just intriguing to me that whenever you're putting yourself on this platform as a journalist, the first thing you put is believer. Not of a believer of what? What? Just believer. Uh, just mm -hmm. everything? He believes. I don't know. Believes. Believes in himself. He's also a Baltimore City special ed teacher. Like X-Files? Like the truth is out there. I believe. Like a believer, like a Bieber fan? Like what? That's believers. Yeah, that's okay. very different. I feel like without knowing anything, so this is pure conjecture, this seems like the website you go to when you're like, ah, oh, I have this crazy belief. Mm -hmm. So conspiracy theories. <laughs> I need an article to substantiate it. Yeah. And you go here and you find an article and you share it and people are like, wow, this is a, this is true, I guess. This is like a published in a journalism, you know, like a news website or something. Yeah. But yeah. it's just published by some random believer. Yeah. I, you know, you're right in that one. I don't know much about Medium. Uh, I think I've heard of it before, but I've never really gone into it. Um, if that is the way that it is, it can be a mixture of like some articles that are actually substantiated in there. And then there's obviously like opinion pieces that are like, I think that, you know, 5G gives me cancer, like that kind of stuff. And it's like totally valid to do some deeper dives into this and understand what the qualifications of this are. That being said, the article's a fantastic read. It's very interesting. I would love to hear about it. I, I will say I clicked on one of the links uh -huh. and one of his quote citations links to a YouTube video entitled Banana Land, Blood, Bullets, and Poison, a documentary. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a documentary based on the banana industry. It basically uh, the article goes into exploitation of companies. Uh, Chiquita is named. I don't know what other companies are that make bananas, but basically how they exploit their workers to get a variety of different banana flavors or you know not flavors but banana like uh like they, they mentioned the what cavin flavors <laughs> cavin I don't know what a cavin dish banana is, but like every time we eat a cavin dish banana, we're professional vicious vicious cycle. Is that behind banana trail of blood, violence, tears, exploitation? So different I don't know genres of banana, different types of banana banana uh different companies i guess trying to keep prices low variety high the horrible things that go into that is that this article is pointing out and showing the different atrocities and different ways that the u.s government and other industries have gotten involved to try to clean it up mm. so i mean it, it's very straightforwardly about bad working conditions but it's just i did not expect dark fruit horror story banana to lead me here or whatever i said that is pretty accurate to your search so i think it, i it think is. google actually did you right there yeah this is a true horror story excellent google yeah it's just, if you attach the word banana to everything it just like starts to be silly and then you realize like oh god oh no oh no that ain't silly yeah. I was hoping for something silly, but I ended up 
learning something and from a believer. Just like isn't a banana republic, it sounds like, ah, oh, it's a fun store, but the real reality is like a completely dysfunctional uh, government and society or something like that. Yeah, it's like a very a very chaotic, corrupt sort of dictatorship or autocracy or something where it's, it's not a good thing. <laughs> Which was bold of the company to name themselves Banana Republic. It's a pejorative term, I think, mm -hmm. as to the state of the country. It sounds catchy and hip. Like, I could wear some Banana Republic, you know, Abercrombie yeah. Banana the term, Republic clothes. <laughs> the term Banana Republic describes a politically unstable country with an econ economy dependent upon the exportation of a limited resource product, such as bananas or minerals. Uh, interesting. So not necessarily in well, not exactly chaos. what I was saying, actually. I was kind of wrong. Yeah. But politically unstable is like a stipulation of the definition, so. It's still meant as like an insult. It's like, your country is poor. Uh, you just have bananas. Uh, I see, I see. Well, anyway, that was good. That was insightful. It led to a lot of discussion. And um, I feel like uh, I know more about the history of bananas. Thank you, Wade. Yeah. Uh, Bob, what did you bring to the table? Okay, yeah. So I continued operating on with the same uh, basic modality. Mm. And my theme for this round was things that are in my garage. <laughs> so I googled mm -hmm. a series of words that are in my garage. Okay. The phrase I googled was shovel Subaru broom water. And where it took me was to kind of a deceptive article. It's an article on liftedimports.com that talks about ostensibly what you should do, how you should prepare to drive your all-wheel drive Subaru on the beach in the sand. Mm -hmm. And it talks about things like what gear you need, shovels and tire gauges and inflated and tire and pumps and things and how fast you should go and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think if you really read between the lines... <laughs> what this okay. article is about, sorry, that was a cough, uh -huh. or that, uh, what this article is about is that it's, it's reiterating the universal point that everything in life is about sex. Uh, right. I'm listening again. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. Mm -hmm. So if you, if I, if you're just reading this normally, you're like, oh, okay, drive slow on the beach or whatever. Uh, Will, if you could put on some like sensual music Ooh. in the background ah. i'm just gonna read an excerpt and i just want to see how you guys feel after i do it okay best practices for driving your subaru in the sand mm. assess the sand condition is it hard deep is it soft and sumptuous <laughs> anakin would disagree Bring an inflator. Be prepared <laughs> to air down. <laughs> Turn off control. Hug the shore and move along the coast. <laughs> Maintain a steady speed and avoid sudden acceleration. Always make sure you're aware of the tide pattern. Uh. Bonus tip. When you've finished, clean your undercarriage. <laughs> immediately <laughs> paraphrased and excerpted by me that was not an exact quote but you get the idea sir yeah i was actually reading along with you that is very close oh, everything think... in life boils down to sex thank you lifted imports a poignant point as we have come to expect from such a website. All right. Uh, I appreciate that. And the tips, I will bookmark this website for uh, later. I do appreciate best, quote, sand driving, end quote, techniques. My favorite sexual thing is turning off traction control. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I didn't actually say traction. That was an ellipses yeah. word for yeah. me. <laughs> control. Just turn off control. It's an implied omission if you read between yeah. the between the between the lines. Right, right, well, right. I'm reading the lines, mister. Mm -hmm. You read inside of them. <laughs> stuff that's not there. Bananas have been fucking people for years. Do you want to be fucked by a banana? I mean, you, <laughs> you say that as a joke, but that's 100% true. You absolutely mm. know. That's one of the uses of bananas. I do know the history. Yeah, people have been being fucked by bananas, but not in like a, ooh, or like a, oh. Literally and metaphorically, though. Both. Both ways. My way and your way. With the peel or without the peel? Or both? <clears throat> All right, so that was very insightful. Bob, very funny. Thank you. Uh, good use of your materials. However, I will say that, Wade, your topic was enticing. And although I feel like you deviated in some ways, I think you still created the better opportunity for discussion. So I'm going to award you the pot for this round of a whopping 76 points. Oh, boy. Am I winning? <laughs> <laughs> 
You just have so much hope in your heart. I, I do appreciate the optimism. Uh, no, you're not. However, oh, you're right. not that far behind. Okay. Current score is Bob with 230 points. Wade, 170 points. Now, here's the kicker. We're almost at the end here. I'm actually going to give you a full 60 seconds. You're not going to deduct any points. But what you are going to do is choose to wager any amount of points up to your total for this round. You can bet anywhere. Bob, you can bet a full 230 if you wanted to. Wade, you can bet 170 points. Whoever wins this round will take everything. Mm. Minimum of 60 points. Hello? All of it. Yeah, I'm thinking. All of it? I either want to win or lose. All of it. Okay. Bob. Actually, wait, no. Hope. All of it but one. Sorry, sorry. All of it but one. You got 229 in the pot. Jeopardy rules. Yeah, you're right. That's good. That's good. I also choose to bet 229. You don't have 229. I want to take a loan? No. No. Okay, then all of it. All of it? I all don't right. even all want one point. <laughs> All right. See if I can oblige you, sir. <laughs> All right. So as it stands, Bob has wagered 229 of their 230 points. Wade has put it all in with 170 points. The pot currently stands at 399 points up for grabs. This is winner take all. Are you guys ready? I will give you two full minutes. All right. Yes. Search for whatever you'd like. Let's do this. I'm ready. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines in three, two, one, go! All right, I'm searching. I'm searching. Good. 10 seconds have passed. Twenty seconds. Thirty. Forty five. One minute. If we find one that we like, can we get more than one or we just have to stop with one? It's one, right? Has to be just one. Okay. Make it the best. 45 seconds remain. Okay, I've got mine. I've got mine. I'm done. All right. I'm done. I think I'm done. Okay. I'm banking. I'm banking it in. Final answer. Final answer. Have you guys... There's my link. Paste... Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Post the link. Right. Yeah, whatever. I'm looking at it. Okay, we're in. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I think Wade was in first. Therefore, Wade, you are up for your final round. This one's for all the beans. Okay, so I'm going to take you through my uh, my thought process here. At first, I was searching uh, whether the three of us were funny, and I found <laughs> out that no, we are not. <laughs> And it made me sad. So then I decide and wonder, why do I stink at this version of the game so much? And then I was like, you know what? I kind of like things that stink sometimes, like the smell of gasoline, or sometimes you fart and you're just like, ugh. But also, hmm. <laughs> I was like, man, let's just search. What, did I, what was my Google? Stinky, but also good was my Google search. Uh huh. And that brought me to this article. Why do bad smells smell good? Mm hmm. And uh, obviously, I haven't had time to read the whole stinking thing yet because it's pretty long, but it actually goes into <laughs> the, uh, the <laughs> biology and chemistry of why we like different smells that are not necessarily good smells okay and uh you know the article itself is intriguing but the topic more so is interesting to me of like yeah are there smells that are like not good that you guys are like secretly like but yes like gasoline's one i love the smell of gasoline and some people i think that's a common one but a lot of people absolutely hate it but man i could live until i died from the fumes just sniffing gasoline like liquid like unburned gasoline fumes yeah yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I, I know some people are like diesel heads and they're like, oh, I love the smell of petrol, you know, but I can't say I'm one of them. I, one of the things I do like, oh, wait, Bobby, well, I was just saying, I love that smell like metaphorically, like the smell when you're doing at a go kart track and you smell the exhaust from the cart in front of you, or like yeah. when I'm filling up my car. Exhaust. I don't yeah. actually like that smell. But like that smell, it hits me and I'm like, oh, ah, it's, it's car time. Mm -hmm. I like what that means, but the smell is gross. Do you I, sniff again? No, I hate it. It's oh. gross. It smells toxic. I know, but <laughs> I have to go back in for more. If I'm on a go-kart and I get a hit of exhaust, for a second, my brain is like, yeah, go-karts. And then the rest of my brain is like, ah, particulates. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. The M2.4 particulates are embedded in my lung tissues now. <laughs> ah! uh, in a similar way, I really like the smell of cigarettes. I don't smoke, but it's very nostalgic for me. My dad smoked, uh, and so I grew up with that smell being everywhere. Most people are like, oh, I hate the smell of cigarettes. It's disgusting. I like the smell of just tobacco by itself. It has a very rich smell. I do not smoke, for the record, and I am not tempted to do so in any way. But it is one of those things where it's like a commonly understood bad smell for me is just like it smells not even like, oh, it's bad and I think it's good. It just to me is very nice. It's a very nice smell. I definitely feel the loose tobacco smells really rich and like nice. And I like cigars. But do you like even like that stank? Like someone smoked a bunch of cigarettes in here yesterday, like dankity smoke smell? Or is it just like fresh burning tobacco? Uh, I like fresh. I don't even really notice like the dank, a leftover smell of smoke smoke. Yeah, I get that. Uh, maybe I associate that with just like old buildings, which I also do kind of like the smell of, uh, you know, 90s industrial offices or something like that. You know, I like that. Very nice. That's fair. Mm -hmm. So just to give some credence to the article I clicked on, they go into like the chemistry of smells and how some things like chemically are similar, but they have very different smells. And we might like a smell like the smell of flowers or something. But if you smell something and you're expecting one scent and you get another, even if it's a scent you like, you might not like it if it's coming from something you're not expecting. Like some people like the smell of cabbage. But if you sniff your shoes after wearing them and you smell cabbage, you'll be like, Ugh. whereas if you smell cooking cabbage on the stove, you might like it. I know, weirdly, my socks after playing basketball as a teenager, if I played like really a lot during a day and I wore the same pair of socks, they would harden and smell like Fritos. Weird. That's a thing. And I love Fritos, but whenever I would smell my socks, yeah, I did not really want to eat Fritos, but you know, that was the scent I got. Very strong Frito smell. No, hmm. I don't know what the deal is with that, because uh, for me, uh, my dog, Lexi, you guys know Lexi, her feet do that. Her feet smell like Fritos yeah. and not like Ooh, that kind of smells like... It smells like Flat if you Fritos. dumped a bag of Fritos yeah. on her. It smells like that. What is that? Weird. That's what my socks would smell like after like three basketball games in a day. I've never experienced that in my life. That is bizarre. Come over. I'll let you smell like... I do, uh, should play okay. some basketball. I'll let you smell me. Uh, no. Yeah, Notable. No, Notable. Wade's is probably stinkier. You should smell Wade's. I don't want it. Yeah, you should. I'm good. And then you can eat some Fritos while you smell it and compare. Uh, okay. The article talks about specifically bad or poor poisonous smells like gasoline, paint fumes, and there's two possible reasons that they list in the article. Uh, one is that perhaps gasoline or, you know, paint or whatever evokes positive memories of something like, you know, Bob's car fumes. Like, you get the scent of like, oh yeah, we're on the road. You don't really like the smell, but like, it evokes a memory or a thought or a feeling associated with an activity or, you know, memory. Yeah. The other one is that um, some of the compounds contained like benzene, uh, toluene. I don't, I don't. I don't know if that's pronounced correctly. Halloween. When those chemicals enter the body, they can release dopamine and cause a euphoric effect. So it's not really like you like the smell. It's like chemically, your body is just releasing dopamine, which makes you think you like it. Hmm. Those are two possible reasons why. But I don't know. I just stinky. The, my whole like we're not funny led me down to the stinky line, and I thought of my smelly feet and gasoline, and that made me happy. And here we are. All right. Very interesting. Very good. Very succinct. Is there something for you tied to the smell of gasoline? or do you just like it intrinsically? I think there is. I think it's because whenever, again, I'll go back to the, the lake I had like with my grandparents mm. I talked about in previous episodes. I used to sit on the back of the boat and like we'd have a towel across the back of the, we were in a pontoon. Um, so it was like a big long back seat. And I would sit there with my chin on the back seat, just staring at the motor and watching the way like that the propeller would in the, the pontoons and everything would kick the water up and just the way that the water would separate and like some of it would go up into the air and some of it would just create waves and whatnot. I was fascinated by that. I would watch that till I went to sleep. But the two tanks of gas would sit right on the back of the boat next to the 
motor basically and so i think i would smell both the fumes of the gas to an extent and also the burning uh whatever you know in the motor i don't know all the technical shit but you know the smell of the exhaust i guess so i think that's probably why cool that's that makes sense that's legit that makes sense also i really want fritos well maybe like little slices of well, cheese maybe we on all them. could get fritos out there yeah definitely all right bob what's up all right so this is a stretch but the theme i went with was my backyard mm -hmm. which led me to uh i have a pretty nice view in my backyard i'm not too close to the city i'm far enough out we can see some stars and the other night i was out looking at the stars and just sort of enjoying the night sky so i searched i was like space stuff this is on theme and it led me to google horrifying space facts all right I don't know. That's that's the thing. You went with space to kiss up to Mark. You knew your audience. It's I know it's he loves strategy. space, but I do love space as well. Mm. Only one person can love space. And I found this article on hammerfilms.com mm. that is 10 terrifying facts about space. There's one particular one okay. that is just my favorite that I'm going to save for last. All right, cool. Because it is the most scientific space fact i have ever heard cool i'm not gonna read the article then you yeah, you, no. uh, you entice me but there i mean so there's some some interesting ones i didn't know this apparently stars can come back from the dead mm. type la supernovae are often referred to as zombie stars because they can actually it becomes a white dwarf post uh, explosion but given a certain set of circumstances it can create a giant supernova which will then kickstart like fusion again mm. and it will just turn back into a star with like active fusion in it huh. which is pretty crazy we've actually seen that before that's how uh thor made stormbreaker probably ah <laughs> you know what hey there you go mm. probably all right and so I didn't actually know that. I thought that was really interesting. This list does a couple, a few things that like, you know, anyone who knows a little bit about space is aware of. One of them is one giant rock flying through space could wipe out mankind. Sure, huge meteor hitting the earth, whatever, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Terrifying, okay. great. Bruce Willis yeah. will save us, don't worry. Right. Um, some stars are vampires, which is really interesting, but I did know that, that literally two stars can be close enough together that one will draw, like the bigger one will draw material from the smaller one. Cool. And it like feeds the, it feeds the life side of the fusion or whatever it draws hydrogen fuel for its own fusion from the other one the little one eventually dies which is pretty fun <laughs> yeah yeah i didn't know this one there's a planet called gleese 436b gleese which is a burning ball of ice what what it is a uh ball of ice <laughs> its entire outer surface is ice and presumably it's covered in quite a lot of ice except the surface temperature of this planet is 439 degrees celsius i'm sorry so does it have a really high is it what is it density or pressure to make it so it stays solid even at that high temperature because yeah so the only reason it's not like actively on fire visibly is that it's covered in water but apparently the gravity pulls the water molecules so strongly and packs them together that they're unable to evaporate so the ice is unable to melt, even though its surface temperature is scorching and it's effectively on fire. Like the Weird. one chemistry fact I remember is that pressure and temperature can combine to where you can get solid liquid and gas at weird numbers, depending on what yeah. the other thing is. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Burning ice planet. Uh huh. Awesome. You know, a couple other facts like supermassive black holes. Well, this one just says supermassive black holes are real scary. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, there are real shooting stars. Sure. Apparently there are mm. uh, uh, hyper velocity stars moving through space at more than a million miles per hour. <laughs> Those are terrifying. Yes. And if they come near you, then fuck your shit up or whatever. Uh, <laughs> also, it, this is one that is not confirmed by observation but i think is interesting so black holes exist right mm -hmm. it's theoretically a space an area from which no matter or light can escape because of our current understanding of physics also theoretically white holes exist white holes which is an area in which there is no matter or light because it is all escaping it's like the inverse of a black hole uh. so you can't go into a white hole and stuff you can't... can be in there stuff is in there it's not like emptiness but if something escapes from it it's impossible for that matter or energy to go back to that white hole so it's like my mom 
<laughs> what? <laughs> I got out, but I can't go back in. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Well, don't try. <laughs> don't do. Don't do that, buddy. Yeah. Maybe not. I don't like that very much at all. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Anyway, it's like it's basically the inverse of a black hole. It's something where it's a very insanely dense thing, object, or whatever, suddenly defined as. But it's emitting light and energy and matter, and it can never go back. Weird. So, and eventually, I assume that would be dissipated right and just be emptiness or whatever but i i don't know how that works yeah i don't know how that works either i haven't heard of that one that is interesting i have to look into that so this is a cool list some of it's stupid you know black holes are scary sure whatever lots of stuff like that but my favorite point on this list the reason i picked this article and uh just the most scientific thing i've ever heard spoken about space uh -huh. is that the next planet we colonize could be hell. Oh. It actually has some scientific stuff. Apparently, Gliese 581c is a uh, planet that's uh, being researched. It's orbiting a red dwarf star and is almost completely hostile to human life. Perfect. Mm. And it's locked in orbit so that it doesn't spin in its orbit, mm -hmm. which is weird. Isn't that bad? But... There's a tiny vertical belt of this planet that is potentially inhabitable by man. <laughs> and it says on this belt alone where the proposed colonization would take place. So we would live in one stripe running north to south on this planet, and the entire rest of it would be an absolute hellscape. Ah, uh, you know, it's so funny. I've heard of this before, and it's just so funny that people would think that the weather would be just so nice in there, and that the hot of the one side wouldn't really want to be on the cold of the other side. I'm not saying it would evenly distribute, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't think it's just going to be all nice, because if I know hot and cold systems and their merging points, isn't that tornado alley yeah i mean <laughs> i have no idea what the atmosphere this list is not very explanatory i have no idea what the yeah. atmosphere is like or whatever but essentially the theory here is the, it's like our moon right so mm -hmm. to explain it for the listeners the sun side of this planet is always facing the sun well not the sun but the star in the same orientation and the back side is always dark so the, the area where the light and the dark side meet where it's kind of shadowy mm -hmm. around the edge they're like ah somewhere in there is just to the perfect temperature for humanity mm. and it's not a lot like what is it less than 10 percent of the entire surface area of the thing probably i have no idea but it, it's not a lot and like you're saying mm. i get that this is scientists researching this and so it's a theory and they're working on it but it doesn't seem like a good plan <laughs> Mm, I really don't think doesn't. that. Why would that be the next planet? I also like the next planet we colonize is like uh, we haven't colonized any. Why would we pick hell? Why would we pick hell as the first one? I would imagine it's probably like one of the closest planets that's even remotely habitable because of how mm. batshit crazy this plan sounds. Right, right. I'll find another one. What's the next closest? That seems like yeah. a bad option. Mm -hmm. Okay. And with that, I think that wraps up our game for today. And now I have to render a judgment on this round. Bob, it was very good with the space. Mm -hmm. uh, Wade with the smells, very nostalgic. I got to say, Bob, targeting the space was a good strategy. Mm -hmm. Wade, the smells, uh, it was very interesting because it's biology and that's always fascinating. So this is actually very close. But this one, I'm going to give to Wade. Oh. Oh, baby. the reason being, here is the reason. They're both interesting to me personally with the discussions of like my like for the smell of cigarettes and tobacco and then my general love for space and interesting space facts. But I'd say on the criteria of a topic that everyone could participate in, because Wade, I know you don't know too much about space, so it's like it was enjoyable, but Wade's smell topic, all of us could participate in that and share something that we all enjoyed in the past. And it was an interesting discussion and kind of like good to know about these things that we all like and why. I think I have to give that one to Wade. Wow. I will very humbly accept my win. <sighs> Please. And with a whopping 399 points to one for Bob Victory. Or, uh, no, wait, not Bob Victory. Wait. You said it. It's binding. <laughs> I'm the winner. I hereby invoke my automatic win. Ooh, oh, shit. 
Well, he does have that automatic win card. All right. Uh, well, Wade, you were already going to win, but you have invoked your automatic oh, win. I'll save that. Then. Your win, automatic win, has now been destroyed. Oh, uh, no, no, I took it back. Uh, so you it. have won. Congratulations. However, you will never be able to use that automatic win at any point in the future, except for on Bob. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Wade and Bob. This was an interesting discussion. Really fun stuff. I'm gonna remember uh, it for the rest of my goddamn life. Uh, Wade, do you want to say a win? speech uh go sniff some uh, feet everyone is that really what we got from your article no but that's what i've got out of life yeah actually that was the ending discussion that is what i remember the fritos oh right we were trying to convince you to sniff feet okay right well, yeah sorry. okay yeah uh bob do you have a loser speech uh space is way cooler than feet so I think Mark is just trying to throw away the bone. <laughs> feet is something we can all touch and act, or, you know, something consent. We can all touch feet of some kind, a dog's, ours. Uh, we all fly through space together at uh, thousands of miles a second in this yeah, great true. big thing called life. So I feel like that's pretty relatable, if you think about that's it. That's true. That's true. Uh, but I'm going to be a gracious loser and concede this one to Wade. Good, good job. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, so much for listening. Uh, remember, please don't crash the websites that we said not to crash. And please do crash the websites that we did say to crash. And then go try to crash our website where we have merch at distractiblepodcast.com slash store or whatever it actually is. I can't Shop remember. Store? Shop store. Just remember. go to Distractible Podcast and just start typing things in after the slash. And don't climb yeah. back into your mom's. Good advice for everyone to take home. Go check out Bob and Wade's channels uh, for more good advice like that. Bob gives equally good advice. Uh, thank you, and we'll... whatever. Podcast out. Uh, make sure to check out our merch at store.distractiblepodcast.com. This definitely wasn't edited in after the fact. I'm still rolling.